busy. Oh, it's a nice time to show up. Tim Rourke and photographer have been waiting all morning. Money, I didn't come for the pictures. I came to tell you something. That's great. Tell me later, huh? They're all set up out there. Money, will you listen to me? I'm quitting. You're what? I'm not signing a new contract. <laughs> well, that's very funny. But uh, let's save the jokes for some time else, huh? Okay? It's no joke. I'm getting out of the business. Now get this straight. I've got $10 million invested in these gems. $10 million. Everyone mortgage till it screams. You stand for the whole thing. Got the picture? Without you, it all goes smash. Like that. Money, I've had it. I'm through. I'm through decorating pulp magazines and asking guys if they're 40 pound weaklings. Come on. Why now, all of a sudden? You've got a beautiful house, a lot of dough. I'm tired of being something you invented. There's no Marine buddy of mine. He's got an engineering company overseas, and he's offering me a job that means something to me. What kind of a job could you hold? Let me worry about that. There's nothing to worry about. Herb, you were a bum when I found you. You'll be a bum when you leave me. Uh, uh, what, do you, what do you want to do, kill me? I could, money. Real easy. Lake's coming along. When will we be able to show? Well, the doc says in a couple of weeks. What's the matter? You got an impatient? You know me, Bill. When I make up my mind to do something, I do it. Yeah, well, you got an education ahead of you. In the Orient, they're hot for fortitude and patience. You can ask my sister about that. When we get there, I'll start learning. And I guess you'll show them a couple of tricks, too. <laughs> hey, look, I got a lot of work to do, so I'll see you both in the morning. Right, Bill. Good night, Louise. <laughs> Stars are pretty, aren't they? I'm not much of a stargazer. You know, they're different here from the way they were in Burma. They're warm here and friendly. Maybe it's the company. Well, that's a good thought. What made you go out to Burma in the first place? Big brother. I had to be with him. It seemed there was always somebody sick over there. If it wasn't malaria, it was dengue fever. And there was never anything to do. Herb, I hope this trip will be better. Hi, Herb. Hi, Jeannie. <laughs> nice evening, isn't it? Why don't you take a swim? Oh, well, thanks, Herb. That's awfully nice, but uh, you're busy. <laughs> She's a nice kid. Mm. Don't you think it's getting a little cold out here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe it is. I think they're just ahead. You look very good sitting there. And you look far away. Sit down. Sure. You were a prize fighter before you teamed up with Marty, weren't you? A couple of years before. Why did you quit? Didn't want to end up punchy, I guess. I tramped around for a couple of years, and, and I met Monty, and he came up with this gym deal. 
her. I wish you'd kiss me. Pleasure. You know what I admire most in the world? A man who's strong and gentle. You were sleeping. I woke up half an hour ago. I heard the record player. Oh, we like music. You're up to your old routine again, aren't you, Louise? No. No, this time it's different. You know, I think I'm falling in love with him. Oh, yeah, like all the others. Get out of my way. I'm not going to let you make a fool out of him. Well, he can take care of himself. Louise, do you want me to tell him about you? You want me to tell him exactly what you are? You're in trouble, Monty. Real trouble. The boys and I bought in, we assumed that Hercules Troy went with the deal. Danny, stop bugging me, huh? Sometimes these things happen. But to me, they don't. I trade for outlets in 20 cities. All right, I'll find myself another one. Fill them just as big. I know you're a promoter, but don't promote me. Damn. I studied this business. You need Hercules Troy to bring the customers in. Lose him and we go broke. I won't tolerate that. Do I make myself clear, Monty? swim like this every day just exhausts me. Oh, well, it's what they call physical therapy. For my leg. You were hurt? Oh, in Korea. It started kicking up again. See ya. Good swim. <laughs> taking a drive down the coast. Louise, are you up to those... Will you leave me alone? Well, you're as bad as Miller trying to run Herb's life. Well, now, somebody had better run yours. You're not capable of doing it yourself. Herb, I'll be in the car. No, no, I'll be back soon. Okay. Why don't you come with us? Oh, no. Uh, thanks, Herb, I can't. Uh, Bill... Maybe I'm not exactly what you had in mind for Louise, but... Herb, I want to talk to you about that. I... Shoot. I'll talk to you later. Just take it easy. Sure. I did. 
They showed me what seemed like a million mug shots, but I couldn't make an identification. What about the car? No, Mr. Shane, it's not only me I'm worried about, it's Herb Troy and my sister. The rush stuff doesn't sound like Marty Miller. He's trickier. Well, then who? Miller never uses his own money in a promotion. He'd be tied in with somebody. Well, where does that leave me? I'll see if I can't figure out some connection between Miller and the boys who roughed you up. All right, Mr. Shane. Then we'll leave it up to you. I do want to meet this Herb Troy as soon as possible, though. Well, can you come over, say, around 8? Okay, fine. I'll be there. All right. Take care of that. Now hold it a second. I'll be right with you. Rourke. Oh, hi, Mike. Oh, sorry, buddy. I can't. I've got a lunch date at the Yacht Club. It's part of this recreation series. Ish, sounds to me like you're writing the biggest boondoggle in newspaper history. Listen, Tim, uh, how about doing me a favor? I'd like you to pull a morgue on Monty Miller, all the way back. Miller, huh? Is he in some kind of trouble? Well, if he is, you'll be the first to hear about it. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Joe Demarest. <laughs> sure, how goes it, Joe? It goes. I put the paper to bed last night, and that Scrooge, who calls himself an editor, gave me the day off. Well, what's wrong with that? Uh, Lucy was just telling me about her sick grandmother. Joe. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't know. Yeah, she, uh, she wanted to ask you for the rest of the day off. Don't listen to him, Mike. Well, I tried. I guess I'll have to go sailing alone. Joe, wait, come here. Tell you what I do, I'll make a deal with you. You do something for me and uh, I'll spring Lucy on your next afternoon off. What's the deal? All you've got to do is enroll for a course at the Hercules gym. Me with the barbells? Uh-uh. Oh, now there might be a new scoop in this for you too. Just keep your eyes open and see if anything's going on down there besides exercise. Such as? That's what I want to find out. Yeah. Little expense money. Brain check? Sure. Okay. They should have been back hours ago. You happen to know the license number of their car? Uh. 9-O-R-2712. Good. Who are you calling? The police. What for? Check the beach area? No, Mr. Shane, I wish you wouldn't. Well, why not? I just wish you wouldn't. Wait a minute. Maybe you'd better level with me. I guess you're right. My sister's a wild kid. She ran around with a crowd of nutty ho-bohemians up in New York and got herself in a mess of trouble. Two arrests. What were the charges? Shoplifting and... Oh, what's the difference? Anyway, she's out on probation to me, and that's why I don't want the police out looking for her. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll be home all evening. You can call me there. All right. Morning, Mike. Hi, Jim. Your personal news service with an item. Oh, something on Monty Miller? No, not directly, but his meal ticket's been kicking up his heels. You mean Herb Troy? Had a call from a friend of mine in Virginia Beach with an eye for publicity. Last night, Troy married Louise Kirk. Hmm. They're still at uh, Virginia Beach? Now, according to my friend, uh, they left for Miami right after the ceremony. Come on, let's take a little ride. All right.
Too bad, Mike. He gave it a good try. like a cinch. Hi. Something you want, mister? A little action. Exercise rooms out that way. All that got me was an aching back. I want Laddie Boy in a fifth. How much do you want to go for? Twenty? Can you handle that kind of action? Are you kidding? Mister, by the time you find the twenty, the race will be over. There you are. Should go up about ten to one. And if I win, where do I find you? Right where I'm standing. I'm here every day. Okay, Joe, I've got it. Uh, by the way, how are the exercises coming? All right, well, just stand there and keep pitching, huh? Oh, Mike, I was just coming in to tell you oh, that... Oh, Lucy, Joe just gave me the license number of a guy who's making book down at the gym. Here, check it out with Brower at the Division of Motor Vehicles, huh? Mm-hmm. Now, what was it you were just coming in to tell me? That I called all the hotels and I found her to lease Troy. He and his wife are registered at the Beardsley. Lucy, you're a living doll. Now, if Gentry calls, uh, tell him I'll be over at the Beardsley. Hmm? You didn't let me finish. He just called. They're doing an autopsy on that poor Mr. Kirk. In that case, have him call me there when they get the results. Okay. Yes. My name is Michael Shane. I'm a private investigator. A private investigator? Well, I don't... Did my brother hire you? That's right. Oh. Well, there's nothing he can do now. Herb and I are legally married. I have the certificate right here. Come in. Thank you. Mr. Shane? Mr. Roy? I heard you talking to my wife. I've heard a lot about you. I'm surprised you'd take a job like this. Like what? Checking hotel rooms. This should take care of my brother's suspicions. Virginia Beach. What time did you get married? Midnight. And when did you get back here? A couple of hours later. 
Have you talked to Bill at all since then? No. Mr. Shane, you've got the picture now, if you don't mind. Mrs. Troy, your brother was found dead this morning in Herb's swimming pool. Dead? Bill dead? An autopsy is being performed right now at the city hospital. Oh, no. You knew he was dead. And, and yet you let me stand there and say all those things? Oh. Hello? It's for you. Thank you. Hello? Hello, Mike. I just got the coroner's report. Kirk wasn't drowned. He was electrocuted. I'm on my way to Troy's house now. Okay, thanks, Will. I'll meet you there. Right. I'd suggest you stay around the hotel. The police will want to talk to you. I feel terrible, Lieutenant. Just terrible. He'd only call for help. I know how you feel. Now, tell me, did you see or hear anything? No, I've been home alone. Daddy's on a fishing trip, so I slept late. All right, Miss Sarlin. That'll be all, thank you. If there's anything I can do... We'll call you. Hi. Right. Who is she? Lives next door. Heard no evil, saw none. How was he electrocuted? Killer must have run a hot wire from the pool. That electric socket over there. Yeah, that must have been it. Anyone using the ladder to climb out of the pool? They've had it. When you found the body, didn't you see any wire around? No. Nope. Now, wait a minute, Will. There was a towel hanging on that ladder. And those rubber mats there. Yeah, that would have concealed the wire. Pretty neat. The neatest part was making it look like death by asphyxia. Without the autopsy, it would have passed for an accidental drowning. You found the wire yet? No, still looking. Oh, the uh, pool service man left this work record. Let's go have a talk with him. You service this pool today? Oh, sure. Hercules Troy's place, that's right. Every Wednesday, vacuum it, brush it down, you know the bit. Uh, what time is that? Seven o'clock. Did you touch the pool ladder while you were there? Yeah, I held on to it while I leaned over to check the chlorine level. Notice any wire around the deck? No, sir. How long were you there? About a half hour. The wire had to be strung after 7.30. What time did you find it? 8.30. It had to happen between 7.30 and 8.30. Hmm. Notice anything unusual, anything at all? No. Hey, come to think of it, yeah, there were two guys in the house having an argument. What two guys? One of them's been living there the last couple of weeks. Bill Kirk. I don't know his name, but the other one was Hercules Troy. Hercules Troy, are you sure? Mr. Shane, there's only one Hercules Troy. You hear what the argument was about? No, nah, I just saw him through the double doors. Say, what happened there anyway? Uh, you'll read about it in the papers. Thanks a lot. Say, uh, if either of you guys have pools, I get a commission if you could, you know. Yeah, well, neither of us have. Well, you can't blame a guy for trying. Uh, you mind if I use your phone? Go ahead. Put out an APB on Herb Troy. Don't bother. He's at the Beardsley Hotel. Thanks a lot. Sure. Bill and I went through Korea together. I didn't kill him. You had an argument with him. You lied to Shane about seeing him. Why? I didn't think it was any of his business. What was the argument about? Nothing. Was it about Louise? No. Herb. Louise, please be quiet. You might as well tell him. They're going to find out about it anyway. Tell me what? Herb? Shane, stay out of this. The girl has a record. Two arrests in New York. She was under probation to her brother, and he objected to their marriage. Isn't that what the argument was about? How about it, Herb? Take him down to him. All right, come on, let's go. That's enough. All right. 
I'll go with you. Put the cuffs on him. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Let's go. He didn't do it. I know he didn't do it. I went over there was to let him know we were married. Why didn't your wife go with you? I guess she knew how he'd react. And when he did, you killed him. Oh, no, Lieutenant. I told you. He talked about her past, and I lost my temper. He said she was no good, that she always used men, and that she was using me. Using you how? She didn't want to go back to the Orient. Well, be my guess. A cigarette, Herb? No, thanks. Now, there's something I want you to know about Bill. Now, you think he hired me to spy on you and Louise. That isn't true. No? A couple of thugs worked him over. They wanted you to go back with Monty Miller. Bill never told me. You see, the murder and the beating may be tied together. Now, do you have any idea who Monty Miller's business associates are? No. Tell me, did you know there was bookmaking going on down at the gym? Bookmaking? Any idea who might be involved? I thought the gyms were on the level. Mr. Shane, you don't think Bill was killed on account of me? Could be. Well, then why don't you ask Monty Miller? Because at the time of the murder, Miller was seen at the gym. He's got a dozen witnesses to prove it. He was the only one who had anything to gain. Well, he'd be taking a pretty long chance, wouldn't he? Figuring you'd come back just because Kirk was dead. This just came in, Lieutenant. Thanks, McCoy. I wired New York for some background on the Kirks. Seems he was worth 200,000. Now it all goes to her and you. Do you think I killed him for his money? That and the girl add up to a pretty good motive in my book. Homicide, Gentry. Yeah. Yeah? Mike, Brower traced that license number for you. The car belongs to Dodie Jameson. Dodie? Ah, thanks, Lucy. See you later, Will. Right. Thanks for trying to help. Come in. Well, hello, Dodie. It's been a long time. What do you want? Oh, just a little talk. Say, you never learn, do you? Those cards have caused you a lot of trouble. Girl's got to keep her hand in. How about it? Ten dollar minimum? Yeah, I'll go for twenty. You're covered. Say, that's some nice furniture here. New friend? Can't control that nose of yours, can you? Stand or hit? I'll stand. Guess I'm not ready to go back to work yet. Where's my 20? I am unemployed. Well, in that case, I think you'll need this. Who's been driving your car lately? Just me. Now, somebody's been taking it down to the Hercules gym. You've got the wrong girl. From his description, he's a thin little guy in his 40s. Now, would I know anyone like that? I think I hear your uh, doorbell ringing. Look, we don't want any. Get lost. A thin little guy in his 40s. Is that a crime? Let go of me. I've got the wrong apartment. Look, there's a murder rap floating around, and it'll be a lot better if you cooperate now instead of later. A murder rap? Who are you, a cop? Meet Mike Shea. Mel Steele. 
You've been making book down at the Hercules gym. Now, who are you working for? Molly Miller or somebody else? Myself. I've already got a witness that can send you up for a year. More if you've got a record. I work for Danny Fleck. That's better. Shane, play it square, will you? You tell Fleck where you got it, and I'll end up dead. Bye, Duty. Mike, all this stuff about me and Monty Miller, it's a lot of bunk. 20 gyms in 20 cities. It's a pretty good front. Might be. I'll have to consider it sometime. Danny, where were you at 7.30 this morning? Home sleeping. Can anyone verify that? I'm a bachelor. And when I tell Homicide about you and Miller, they're going to be right over here asking questions. Now, why don't you save yourself some time and trouble? Look, I don't know any Bill Kirk. Why would I want to kill him? To get rid of him. So you and Miller could work on Herb Troy. Shane, if I was going to kill someone, I sure wouldn't electrocute them. I'm sensitive about the method. Don't wear them out. <laughs> I've promoted everything from going on to business sales to Broadway shows. I've never been in jail. I certainly never needed to kill anybody. Well, this isn't the first gambling operation you've been connected with. I've checked. Well, you must be referring to Ansonata. I've matured since then. I don't know why we're talking about this anyway. When Kirk was killed, I was right here in the gym. All right, so you've got an alibi. Fleck doesn't. That's right. It's his problem, not mine. Okay. And thanks. Mr. Shane, my lawyers have just gotten her about a jail on a writ. Now, if I'd killed Kirk, would I want to help your number one suspect? to you for sending your lawyers down. This is Troy. I want you to know I had nothing to do with Kirk's death. The police have already established that. Herb, I'd like you back with me. Double your former salary, plus a percentage. Forget it. Well, you're not going to burn me now, and if you've got a wife to support, get out. Herb, you won't find it so easy to make a living now. Mrs. Troy, perhaps you could explain things to him. Mr. Miller, there's something that you should know. We don't need you or your gyms. My brother left us a great deal of money. I see. Well, I guess I can't fight that, can I? Herb, if there's anything you need... I won't. Not from you. It's been bothering me ever since I heard about Bill. When I left the hotel this morning, where were you? Well, you don't think that I... Louise, if Monty didn't do it... Well, Monty has friends. Herb, I didn't even ask you. I, I wouldn't. Oh, trust me. Please tell me that you trust me. Sure, I do. <laughs> So you made it. 
tie up between Fleck and Monty Miller. What am I supposed to do with it? Bring in Fleck. Yeah, what for? Bookmaking? Not my department. Besides, what makes you think your friend Mel Steele would testify in court? Oh, been known to happen. Oh, sure. And Cinderella married the prince. Ah, oh, come on, Mike. You know as well as I do that Fleck would be sprung in less than two hours. Lieutenant, they just found this. Where? Some kids were playing with it near a storm drain a couple of blocks from the house. Any chance of running a trace? There must be 10,000 yards of that sold every day in Miami. You can pick it up in any hardware store. That's uh, kind of long, isn't it? It measures out to 82 feet. Yet we measured only 39 feet from the pool ladder to that outlet by the retaining wall. Well, the killer could have hidden the extra wire in the ivy. Maybe. Market exhibit A. Is that you, Herb? This is Officer Hartag. Troy's not here. Something wrong? Wait there. What's up? Louise Troy just went out the window. <laughs> Sign of a struggle. Yeah. Guess it was supposed to be a suicide. You have a hard job proving anything else. Just as Kirk's death was supposed to be an accident. Hello, Herb. Oh, Mr. Shane. What are you guys doing here? Where's my wife? Suppose you tell us. I don't know. She was here when I left. Where'd you go? I don't see why. The airline office. What for? Louise and I are going to New York. Got the tickets? Let me see them. This flight leaves in less than an hour. Was your hurry? That's none of your business. I was released. What's the matter? What happened? She was pushed out of the window, wouldn't you? Pushed out? Yeah. Motive? The money goes from Kirk to her, from her to you. Oh, no. I didn't do it. I loved her. It was Monty Miller. I'll take your statement down at headquarters. Let's go. Will? I don't know yet. 
fuck you too, huh? Yeah. Now well, maybe we ought to join a gym. Where's my gun? You must have taken it. speaking. I want an APB on Herb Troy. There's a make in my office. He's armed and dangerous. Right. You mentioned Monty Miller. Yeah, that's where I'm headed now. Want to join me? Uh, there's something else I want to check. Okay. did anything to Troy's wife, and he knows it. He's liable to come here anyway. Why? Throw suspicion off himself. Trying to get you would make him look innocent. She's not that smart. That could be a mistake a lot of people have made about him. Next door, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I'm Jeannie Arlen. I'm Mike Shane. Have you been home all day? Oh, yes, with all the excitement and everything. I just couldn't go to work. Have you seen anyone around here? No, I didn't actually see anyone. Of course, the full service truck was here. That was about uh, 7 o'clock this morning. Oh, no, it was 9.30. 9.30? Are you sure about that? That's when I got up. Did you mention this to uh, Lieutenant Gentry? No, I didn't think it was very important. He had asked me if I had noticed anything around here between 7 and 8.30, but I was asleep then. Yeah. Did you see the pool service man? No. Mm. Is there something I can do? Yes, there is. Come on, Lieutenant. Chapter Hill. Anything develop up there yet? Troy showed. I've got him. Listen, well, I'm over at his house now, and I've got a new angle on the killing. Now, you may be right about her, but I'm not so sure. How about bringing him and Miller over here? Why Miller? Just bring. Okay. Come on downtown with me. Let's go. All right. Now, we know that the wire that electrocuted Kirk was fastened to that ladder. Run along under the rubber matting, along the grass up to here. Now, it could have been plugged into this socket. But it might have been hidden in the ivy. And run on up to that window there. And here it is. 
Now, the killer could have plugged it into this wall sock. But as you can see, there's enough line left to reach this clock radio. Where he plugged it into this automatic timer. Why? Why would anybody want to go through all that trouble? By using this, the killer could have set it hours before to go on right at the time Kirk went in for his regular daily swim. You mean it turned itself on, killed Kirk, and turned itself off? Exactly. We've been looking for a killer who had to be here between 7.30 and 8.30 this morning. He could have been here last night. Right. So there goes your alibi, Miller. I wasn't here this morning, and I wasn't here last night. Then the killer came back at 9.30 this morning, dressed as a pool service man to get rid of the wire. And your next door neighbor saw him. Jeannie? Which one was it, Jeannie? And there she was, sitting in a catbird seat. She had the money, and she had Herb. She told me she wasn't about to let him go. I wasn't going to take that for many days. You know the rest. Jane? If you knew it was me all the time, why'd you put me through the ringer? I knew how, but not who. You gave me the answer. Still hard to take. How could she have done that to a guy like Bill? Well, she wanted three things. Money, freedom, and you. He stood in the way of all three. Hi, Mike. Hi, Herb. Jim. Glad to see you, Tim. Sorry I stood you up at the gym. Forget it. I got a story to make up for it. I've been doing some figuring. My business isn't so bad if you don't get mixed up with guys like Miller and Fleck. I'm going to open up my own gym. Sounds like a great Wonderful. idea. I'll be your first customer. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All together, man. Thanks, fellas. <laughs> Let's drink to it. No, thanks. I'm in training. After this one. <laughs> Here's to you. some exciting moments from next week's Michael Shane mystery. Honestly, Freddie, what would it look like? Your father on his deathbed and you running off to marry a cheap little tramp. It's in the blood. My father married one, too. Watch your mouth. Kenny? Barney, there's a fireplace. And on that wall, there's a gun case. With pistols and rifles. Mr. Endicott wouldn't have left you without a reason. Uh, Mr. Shane, this is Mrs. Endicott. Has my man been to see you yet? Yes, he has. In the mood he's in, I, I'm afraid he might kill Freddie. Come on, Shane, hurry up. He's killed before. <laughs> Mike, you'd better get over here right away. Well, what's the matter? Everything. Please, Mike, hurry as fast as you...
This has been a four-star production.